QuickBooks Desktop 2023 1099 reports. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area, view drop down, noting we got the hide icon bar and the open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial, we're looking at that P&L, we're looking at you P&L, range change 010124 to 123124 customize it that's january to december fonts and numbers to customize changing the font to 12 like we do every time okay yes okay then reports drop down again company and financial this time down to the balance sheet standard changing the dates this time with the drop down fiscal year of 2024 customize it fonts numbers por favor change them to 12 okay yes okay that's the setup process we do every time now we're going to be looking at the 1099 reports couple ways you can get there you could go to the reports drop down vendors and payables you got your 1099 reports down here we can also go to the report centers let's do that now report center maximizing it because it unmaximizes for some reason when we go to the report center vendors and payables and we're scrolling down to the 1099 reports so i'll open one up the 1099 reports are in the vendor section because they have to deal with people that we are paying remember for quickbooks vendors represent uh people that we're buying goods and services from and cash ultimately going out typically from the company to the vendors for those goods and services we're going to use within the business now for reporting purposes taxes are going to come in and confuse things once again because from an irs perspective the the irs has an income tax and what they would like to do on the leverage side or where the irs has leverage to make sure that they're collecting on the income tax is on the payer within a business transaction so in other words every business transaction typically has if we go back to the home page we are all basically customers and vendors every transaction has a customer and vendor from the standpoint of entering data in quickbooks customers represent goods and services we're providing to others hopefully receiving receiving money at the end of the transactions vendors representing goods and services provided to us money going out at the end of the transaction but every transaction we are in we are also the other side we're a vendor and we're a customer so when we're paying someone that's when the government typically has the most leverage to try to get information from us about the person we are paying the person that we are paying money to is receiving generally income so they're going to be getting money typically the irs wants to know about that because we have an income tax so the reason they have leverage against the payer is because we want to lower our income tax reporting by getting a deduction so whatever we pay for for our business in order to get the deduction the irs can say hey we would like you to give us some reporting information if you want that deduction and that's where the leverage comes in so the biggest expense for example for us is typically to be paying employees and the government says hey do you want a deduction to pay those employees well then you've got to give us a bunch of information about them you've got to actually take the money that you were going to pay them and pay it to us on their behalf for their income taxes now they have a little less control when it comes to uh, paying other people just normal vendors but in certain cases we still might have to be issuing the 1099 
I won't go into the, the case, the reason, the rationale why in detail, because this isn't a tax course, but generally, if you're giving money to a, a uh, contractor, like a sole proprietor, someone that's not incorporated, obviously if you pay like your utility bill to Edison company, then the government's not really worried because they have other systems in place to regulate you know, large companies like that. But if you're paying an, a sole proprietorship, a contractor, the government's worried that those smaller people will not report their income and they have no other system of control to see that they are doing so. So they're going to they're going to want the 1099s. That's where kind of the 1099s come in. So if you got vendors, people that you're paying that are not incorporated, you pay them over a small dollar amount, it's like $600 or something, then you might have to issue the 1099s at the end of the year, which are just reporting documents to show that you paid these people so the IRS can go after them for their income taxes. So note that when I when I look at my summary report, that means I've got to tell QuickBooks something for QuickBooks to be able to process the summary report. The summary reports can then be used for us to generate the actual 1099s, which you may be able to process in QuickBooks by going to the vendors drop down and going to the, the 1099 forms and you can print an e-file uh, the 1099 forms or at least look into the process of e-filing at the end of the year or you can file them by hand either way you've got to do some added information to note which vendors are subject to the 1099 requirement this is a this is usually a kind of a little bit of a tedious process because normally when you pay vendors for example if i go to the home tab we might wait till the checks clear the bank and use the bank feeds if we're just paying them electronically and in that case uh, when we set up the vendors, it's usually when we enter the data from the checks. So we'd have to make sure to go in there and tell the system that this is particular vendor is one that might be subject to 1099 requirements. Or w when we write the check, we might set up vendors at that point in time. Or when we enter the bills, we might set up the vendor at that time. When we set up the vendors, we're usually just concerned with paying someone, may not be as concerned with getting all the 1099 uh, information we need for year-end reporting and we got to kind of keep that stuff in the back of our mind so if you end up at the end of the year and you don't have all the 1099 reporting stuff you might want to go through your vendors and try to determine which of them might be subject to the 1099 so in other words you can go to the vendor center is one way you might do it and just look through your list of vendors and try to determine which ones would need a 1099. If you go into a particular vendor and you edit the vendor, then you can indicate for the tax settings here that they would be subject to a 1099. That's where you're gonna basically turn on the 1099, which is one of the items that would then be used for QuickBooks to determine that this person should be included in the 1099 reporting so you can process the report so you can issue the year end 1099s so another way another way you might go in there if you if you're trying to scan your 1099s or your vendors to see if you need to add them to a 1099 list is you might go to the reports themselves open up the 1099 report possibly run it for 010124 to 121024 and then you might say okay i'm gonna i'm gonna first adjust the settings up top see the drop downs Maybe I'm going to go to all vendors instead of the only 1099, allow, um, allow all accounts, and then you could use the thresholds or possibly not use the thresholds. I'll keep the thresholds on. And then you have two main types of 1099s. The NEC is probably the most common at this point. And then you can basically go into here and you can try to go down and say, okay, which vendors are going to be over the threshold, the low threshold of $600 that I would have to pay and then try to determine which of these vendors are uh, going to be non-corporate, not, they're not corporate entities and therefore subject possibly to the issuing of the 1099s. So then you can go through here and try to tick and tie off which ones need to be adjusted and made into a 1099 customer. Once you have determined that, then you can go back to your vendors over here and basically whichever one, if this one right here was supposed to be or needs to be a 1099 individual, we can then edit that item and go to 
the taxes and say they're going to be subject to the 1099 and OK. Now this one, of course, you need the you need the ID number as well. So if I said five 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 five, is that right? Five 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 as an ID number. The ID might be a social security number if they don't have an an EIN number. So you want to when you try to work with a contractor, typically you would like for them to give you their uh, their number first, your their information, their address, and their uh, number which would, might be a, an employee identification number and if they don't have that the social security number you would prefer to work with someone that has EIN numbers typically because that might mean they're more kind of professional and organized in it uh, and, and that's part of the filing requirement and you could use the form this is the irs.gov website form uh, w9 you could search for it for irs.gov and look more into the instructions related to it but Use Form W-9 to provide your current taxpayer identification number, T-I-N, to the person who is required to file an information return with the IRS to report, for example, income paid to you, real estate transactions, mortgage interest paid, acquisition, and so on and so forth. Now, when we say that it's income paid to them, you might say, hey, I'm not paying them income. They're not my employee. I'm paying them for goods and services they provided to us. But from the taxpayer's perspective, from the IRS's perspective, that's income to them. And so that's they want to know that so they can report that for the income taxes. So we could go through the, here and try to add a couple of these uh, items. Let's, let's take a look at the vendors for last year. Let's take a look at this for 21. So let's say Sloan Roofing. We've got, let's go up to the top bank. Bank, Bayshore, we got Bruce's office. Let's add Bruce, Bruce, Bruce's office. So we're gonna go here and then I'm gonna say, let's edit and let's go to the tax information. And let's say, we're gonna say Bruce is added. Let's say seven, 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 seven. And the, the, the EIN might be like a nine, nine dash something, something, something format instead of the social security format. And then we're going to say, okay, report here for the 1099. And then we, we may be able to then go to the 1099 only and allow all accounts. I'll keep that there. Use the threshold, the NEC. Let's keep it there. So now we've got this list of, of people. So that's how the report can generally be used. Now, when you process the 1099s at year end, you could go to the vendor dropdown. 1099 forms you've got the print uh, e-file 1099 forms you can you could go through review 1099 vendors this is another report that you could see you know which which vendors have the 1099 turned on and off fairly easily it's not a report that you can use as easily to kind of uh, determine if they're subject to a 1099 because it doesn't give you the balance of how much you pay them periodically you might need to go through your vendors you might have a whole lot of vendors that you don't even pay money to anymore as active you might try to clean them up and make them inactive to make this process a little easier then they've got the list that that have been checked off here we can go to the vendors drop down and we've got the uh, de detail report and then you can order 1099 forms if you so choose that's kind of a marketing thing because they'd be selling you in essence the 1099 forms if you go into the e-file process before you prepare file form 1099 miscellaneous and form 1099 nec note the following you can map an account to only one of the 1099 forms so these two forms 1099 miss and nec are you know two different forms it used to be the miscellaneous included the main thing that's on the 1099 nec non-employee compensation and then they broke out the 1099 nec so this is for most people the one that you're usually going to be using for for contractor with you know stuff you're paying to contractors typically so if you have an account with payments that are applicable to both forms it's recommended that you create separate accounts for payments made uh, specific to each of these forms so in other words we could if we had an issue between which one of these two it's going to be applied to we could go to the accounts and assign the accounts that we're paying the vendors for to one of these forms but uh and and then if if it if if you've got it, part of that account going to both forms you can create two accounts 
to try to manage your 1099s a little bit more easily. I won't go into that in detail. Do you want to print? I'm gonna say, let's say yes. And then we've got our little widget process to take us through the process. Let's help you prepare and file your 1099 forms. You must file form 1099 NEC to report non-employee compensation and form 1099 miscellaneous to report miscellaneous income. If you have vendors who are eligible for both forms, you need to prepare and file them separately. Things to know, Form 1099 NEC and Form 1099 Miscellaneous filed in New York or Wisconsin have special rules for boxes state tax withheld and state payer state uh, number, and they need to be filed accurately. Uh, you can print and mail the forms to the IRS or file electronically with the IRS using the 1099 e-file service. The IRS requires you to e-file if you submit over 250 forms, which is fairly high number. So we're gonna be looking over here on this side, we got 1099 NEC, cause that's the most common. Report non-employee compensation, like the money you pay to an independent contractor who perform work for you. I'll furnish the form to the re to recipient by January 31st, 2022. So the 1099 form has to be given to them the person who worked for you for their informational purposes to help them out to prepare their taxes, but mainly the government wants it, right? To, so that they could double check that that person uh, printed their, or actually reported their income. Print and mail the form to the IRS or file electronically by January 31st, 2022. Then you got form 1099 miscellaneous, which used to be the one that we also use for the contractor, but now it's been changed a little while ago, a few years ago. Report miscellaneous income, such as rental income, royalties, and Native American gaming profits. Furnish form to the recipient, same kind of process. So I'll say get started over here on this side. It says select the vendors that need a form 1099 NEC. You need to make the vendor selection every time you start this process. So it's selected them off and hopefully you probably want to check it to the actually reports that, that were run, but it looks like they're, you know, they should be able to check those off given the information provided to the system, including the vendors being identified to be having a 1099 that we checked off and the the balance that they have that they're over the threshold and then if there's any other kind of things that we put in there in terms of the account showing which type of 1099 it should take that into consideration at this point we're going to say next and it says verify your 1099 info so we got the vendor we got the tax id we got the company name this would generally be something a field that we would like to have populated but these two fields uh, would be necessary for sure. Address is necessary for sure for the contact information is what we're going to be needing because that's what the IRS wants to identify them. On the IRS side of things, obviously the, the these people are numbers, so they have to have, this is like an EIN type of number, and these are like the social security formats uh, of the numbers so that they can determine who they are and make sure that they reported their income. So we can say, okay, continue. Map vendor payment accounts. You used uh, these QuickBooks accounts to track payments to your 1099 vendor. Now tell us where the amount paid from each account should appear on form 1099 NEC. So we've got these items you can map on an account to only one of the 1099 forms. So we've got the expenses here and generally it's gonna be non-employee compensation, usually it's going to be that's the one that is most common non-employee compensation we're going to map it to that's the box on the actual 1099 form that it would be going to the 1099 form looks like this just so you can get an idea of it so this is the non-employee compensation 1099 nec Let's see if i can make it a little larger and then box one that's where the major number would go non-employee compensation here so I'm going to minimize that. And so let's say report all payments in box one. We could check that off. That would make it easier. <laughs> so continue. Uh, review payment and exclusion. The IRS requires you to exclude from 1099 forms any payments you make by credit card, debit card, gift card, or PayPal. So it's gotten a little bit con more confusing in terms of how you pay someone because it used to be that you pay someone with checks mainly or possibly cash. But now if you pay them in some other ways, the IRS is trying to get these other formats of payment 
as being the intermediate, the person that's going to rat out <laughs> the person that got income, right? So the problem with that is uh, if they're able to get these people to tell the IRS that they have received money and we issue a 1099, then you can end up with two 1099s for the same amount, for the same money, going to the same vendor, and that's going to cause the vendor problems because the IRS is going to think that they got twice as much money or something like that. So you got to take into consideration the rules on when you need to report to something and be careful with them because uh, you, you don't want to, to mess up the like issue money that they earned when they didn't really earn the money or double up on the 1099s that'll cause problems for the people you're working with, your vendors. So include and exclude payments showing all the payments you made to the selected vendors. For QuickBooks to exclude these payments from 1099 forms, select View Include Payments, edit the checkbox field to include an appropriate note. To verify these payments have been excluded from 1099 forms, select View Exclusion. So View Includes, these are the items. I could go to the View Excluded and these are the items there. I'm going to say, okay, let's continue. And so confirm your 1099 entries. Review this summary of vendors for whom you are creating form 1099 NEC and the amounts being reported for a calendar year shown. Double click any amounts uh, to review transaction details. So we could go in and use our zooming tool to drill into these items uh, in more detail. And so then we can continue, choose a filing method. You can print and mail the forms to IRS or electronically with IRS 1099 e-file. You can print form 1099 to pre-printed forms. So when you print them, you still have to order the forms because you can't just print them on a blank piece of paper. You gotta have the pre-printed forms that you put into the printer and print them on it. Uh, file form 1099 NEC electronically with IRS using 1099 e-file, fees will apply. So there's no real getting away from the fees. Either you have to buy the forms or you can e-file, which hopefully would be an easier process, but you still have a fee related to it. That's the general idea.